uh, we are still dealing with the talent issues and all of that. So how easy is it to kind of keep going with the pace of change? Do you see those kind of issues saying, okay, yeah, something works, but now there's more possibility and you could do more and you could do more, and, but the talent is limited. So how do you deal with those issues of ever-changing needs? See, the good news is now that the new talent which is coming into the industry, and that I'm referring to the Gen Y, they are not going to have boundaries with them. Like, you know, we have our self-defined boundaries. They don't have those boundaries. So when I say this, the new system, let, uh, let me give you an example. And what do you think, how many technologies this cell phone has? Any guess? The kind of functionality features built into this? Any guess? Several thousand. So it has thousands of technology, the interconnected technology, I think this is the best example. And the usage of this, and what is the user, what are you worried about? Only the usage. You are not worried about the back-end part of it. Today, even in IT, what is happening? In many organizations, shadow IT is becoming very critical. Business wants this moment business says that I want this kind of a solution, then as IT people, what we start thinking, no, no, this is IT security issue, so we'll have to do this, this is storage, this virtualization, have this problem. You start thinking about boundaries. The user is not bothered about it. And he straightway jumps into the solution. Now, how we can find those solutions within those boundaries is the challenge as technology people you will have. And that is where service provider comes into picture. But the most important thing of talent is, I don't think we can put this boundary to talent. I think people who learned Windows in 93, 94, they're already in their job. And uh, give them next five years, I don't think they need an IT department. The IT department will remain the job of the service providers. That is the way it is changing. And that fast it is changing. So talent, I don't think, is the, that problem, in my opinion, is resolved. The acceleration to that, how much it will take, it will depend on the time you give to it. The most important thing is the way we build the organization around that talent. And let me put some thoughts on this. So in every organization, there is a formal organization structure. And there is an informal organization also. Do you all agree with me? Many times, this informal organization is more powerful than the formal organization. Because the kind of influence they provide in the organization on decision making, they are much more strong. And having said this, the, the basis on which this informal organization grows in the structure is I'm saying the positive side of it. There are negatives which many of you may think about in formal organization. But when your process efficiency reaches a level that it becomes a barrier for your growth, you all are driven, all of us are driven by policies and procedures. So if it is not in our policy, it cannot be done. And that is what I mean by limitations then in that case, this informal organization comes into play and influences the decisions of the decision-making body in the organization structure to make changes there and take special approvals. And that kind of organization structure, you know, give it, give it one more tangent. Think about the social organization, which all of you are aware of the concept how that social organization will grow in your organization and bring the technology piece and grow further. Now, these are things which are happening. Collaboration is increasing. Whether we like it or not, there is more collaboration. Our next generation is more collaborative than us, there is no doubt. Social organization structure, we believe it or not, we like it or not, is bound to come. And if we say that, the talent is taking a different shape and we need to define 
right business models and right organization structures to manage them. And that is what the organization productivity, I and mean, that is how the organization productivity will come. And this is what uh, we need to be aware and conscious. And we do not become a resistance to that. This is something we need to be conscious about. Thank you very much. I don't think uh, I could have had another uh, better proposition, as you put, uh, to kind of come to a position where we can now take questions, because we are now, uh, to give a little bit of comfort, we are 10 minutes uh, left with the session, and we can finish faster if you've got no more questions. But I have uh, possibly one or two questions. But uh, I think what you put down is uh, fairly powerful. You're saying that talent over time is growing. People who learned Windows are now available. And any your technology is also making it relatively simple. People who learned Windows in class four. <laughs> In 1994, <laughs> they are on the job. Correct. <laughs> Give them some more time. Let me let them come to the middle management. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, so I think, the, and and technology is also becoming relatively simpler. It's not necessarily as complex as it used to be, and you don't need to be under the hood to drive a car anymore. So, so with that, I I do want to have a couple of questions because I don't want to make it uh, a one-way talk from this side of the the table. But are there any questions to to these eminent panelists? I know. Uh, we are sitting between you and the lunch, so you might have some questions which are hidden and won't come out. But if there are any questions, I'm willing to take. OK, seems like I guess uh, very well that there are no more questions. So before we end, are there any parting thoughts which any of you would? I, yes, I, sure. I would like to just add uh, that there are uh, very important critical readiness factors that we need to be conscious about. Um, uh, considering that last century, 100% of those top 30 companies are reduced to only two in the list of top 30 today. Obviously, there were 28 of them who did not do things right. And there is another transformation in the, in the, in the, in the life today. And that is uh, what we are discussing about. And to be interconnected, to be competitive, we have to be interconnected. To be efficient, we have to adopt new technologies. And to be able to adopt and be interconnected, we have to be ready. And there are immense amount of readiness that especially in India we need because we are still very, very archaic in many, many of our aspects, especially in manufacturing. This is to do with manufacturing systems, manufacturing processes, digital manufacturing. I would say make in India of Mr. Modi will not happen without Mr. Modi's digitalization. It's not possible. So make in India of tomorrow is only possible if it is digitalized. That means every engineering organization have to go digital as far as their product development is concerned. They have to go digital as far as their manufacturing processes are going to con Because tomorrow's people are not going to be operating things. Tomorrow's people would be controlling things. They would be the ones who would be authoring things. And that's where human factors would be reused and a better used. Perfect. I think you, you, you've put it rightly, saying that it's not just about technology. It's not just about having it there and, and availability and adoption. Readiness. I think readiness is uh, a very, very important dimension that if you, and we, I've personally seen a number of failures. Uh, they happen because there isn't readiness to accept, receive, or operate uh, a particular kind of thing. Uh, although on the readiness uh, front, I'm, I'm actually becoming a little bit concerned on a, on a lighter note is that technology is making it uh, a lot of us many of us redundant and it's saying that you know you really don't need to be ready today you don't need to teach somebody how to use iphone as you gave the example it's gone other days when in fact they say that the uh, the word user manual should be deleted from the dictionary because there is no need for any user manual so i'm, I'm a little bit uh, worried in fact there's a quote which i read somewhere saying that uh, the the uh, technology centers of tomorrow uh, will have uh, only two kind of people deployed there'll be a human and there'll be a dog and the human will be required to feed the dog. Right. And the dog is there to make sure that the human doesn't touch that system. Mm -hmm. So with that, I, I, I conclude. Thank you very much for being such a, a great panelist. And thank you very much for being a great audience, despite being hungry. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, have a good day. And wish you uh, bon appetit. Thank, thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Tadeja. And uh, may I request? our panelists and our session chair for really uh, making sure that he does kind of uh, think about the uh, time limit. So thank you so very much. Because I finished five minutes earlier. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So I think double the applause is for him in that case.
Thank you, gentlemen. It has been a pleasure. Mr. Dheer, thank you for sharing your thoughts, sir. Thank you so very much, sir. And may I also request uh, Rajesh from uh, Team uh, ETS to please join us on stage and thank our session chair for truly putting all of this together and weaving it through. Rajesh? Thank you so very much, sir. And gentlemen, may I request all of you to please join us for a group picture? Thank you all. You're welcome uh, to join us for uh, networking lunch. And I'd like to request all our guests to please join us in the hall uh, in the next 45 minutes uh, for our next session in case studies.